do my best to um, explain what I think is interesting in, uh, um, uh, in the topic of e EUS and pancreatitis. Now, the objectives uh, of um, the uh, talk is to uh, uh, present some data on the role of EUS in acute pancreatitis, in particular uh, idiopathic, what is called idiopathic pancreatitis, uh, the, uh, its role on the diagnosis of autoimmune pa pancreatitis and um, uh, in uh, chronic pancreatitis. Let's start with the uh, first. Now, um, uh, when you look at population-based studies on acute pancreatitis, uh, you uh, can see that up to 30 per percent, that is to say almost one third of patients with a first episode of acute pancreatitis are labeled as uh, uh, idiopathic. That is to say we do not know what the cause is. And should we evaluate the, these patients at all? The answer is obviously yes, because uh, uh, they may get a recurrent episode, uh, and this means they uh, will have a higher risk to develop chronic pa pancreatitis, uh, but also because uh, they may uh, actually have a pancreatic tumor as a cause of their acute pancreatitis. Now, th there are many studies looking at uh, what should be done in these patients, and there are many algorithms uh, out in the uh, literature. Um, uh, I'm presenting this one here uh, only to try attempt and challenge it later on in my talk. Uh, so, uh, most people, I think, after a first time e episode of acute pancreatitis of unknown cause, would do some standard uh, blood test and history, uh, a transdermal ultrasound, and some may also do a uh, CT scan. Um, most people, I think, would consider EUS and MRCP second-line tests, uh, and some of them may actually uh, choose to pe perform them after a relapse. As I said, I will try to uh, challenge this further on. Um, so, uh, what is the, uh, di the diagnostic yield of EUS uh, after idiopathic uh, pancreatitis, or other pa pancreatitis of unknown cause? Uh, this is a systematic re review of 13, uh, 13 uh, studies, in uh, who each between eight, 18 and 370 uh, patients were uh, included. The diagnostic yield um, varied from 41 to 80 per, per percent. The most common uh, cause of pancreatitis identified in these patients was CBD stones or microlithiasis, uh, followed by chronic pa pancreatitis, pancreas di divisum, and focal pancreatic uh, lesions, including pancreatic cancer. Uh, now, there's a lot of talk about EUS versus MRCP, uh, which is best, which is better, so we do both, etc. Uh, my main message is that they are com complementary, although I'm a big fan of uh, EUS like most of the people here. Um, this is uh, a recent study in which the, uh, the investigators um, um, did both EUS and, uh, and MRCP in patients who had an episode of acute pancreatitis and had negative uh, 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 workup, including a negative CT scan. In up to half uh, uh, the uh, patients, they found a specific cause of pancreatitis, and most often uh, CBD stones. In, interestingly, in 23 out of 25 patients with uh, with, uh, 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 with uh, CBD stones, these were I identified on NIUS, whereas this was the, the, the case only in eight out of two, 25 patients um, uh, re re regarding MRCP. Uh, how, however, the fact still remains that the uh, EUS missed CBD stones in this study in three patients and MRCP identified all patients with pancreas the division, which was not surprisingly, I think, the case in EUS. So EUS and MRCP are complementary. EUS is obviously better to uh, 
identify a gallstone disease, according to this study, but also according to this one, which is a bit earlier. Again, the same scenario, patients with uh, acute pancreatitis of idiopathic cause, in up to half uh, the patients uh, EUS identified a specific cause of pancreatitis. The only patient group in who reads uh, EUS um, uh, was uh, in which a, a specific cause was diagnosed only by MRCP. It was three patients with pancreas division. So do both if you can. Uh, but when should you do EUS? I think most people in, in practice would uh, um, send off a patient with acute pancreatitis of unknown cause uh, to an EUS after a relapse. At, at least that's our experience here, both in Denmark and in Sweden at least. In this study, the uh, authors uh, presented their uh, data, the findings, the diagnostic yield of EUS um, um, performed in patients after a single versus uh, a, a after a recurrent episode of acute pancreatitis of unknown cause. As you, as you can see, both in the uh, no previous co cholestectomy and the post cholestectomy group, the, uh, uh, the diagnostic yield was similar. So it doesn't really matter. Um, in fact, in this case, it was higher. Uh, if you uh, do it after a, a single episode. So, the uh, take-home message is do your e EUS early. And it actually makes sense because most of these patients, as we said, have a CBD stones. And um, a, a relapse due to CBD stones usually occurs early, after a couple of weeks maximum. So, EUS should, should be done early, I think. Let me show you a couple of cases which I think are interesting. They may be anecdotal, but I think um, uh, they make sense and illustrate what I've uh, been attempting to uh, convey. Uh, this is a case that we, we had of a, a gentleman who presented with three episodes of recurrent acute pancreatitis. He had a negative uh, uh, workup and a transdominal ultrasound with his cold body looking like that. He had an MRCP after a, a second episode that showed only a cystic lesion which uh, was thought to be a, an IPMN. So the guy was referred on to an EUS due to the cystic lesion. And in, indeed, we found out that it was an IPMN, a side branch, but when we looked at his uh, gallbladder, it looked like that. So just compare this and this one, transabdominal. Uh, so microlithiasis, right? The patient had a cholestectomy and didn't get a uh, further um, episode. So we do things, we do see more things on EUS, uh, and I think uh, that's the um, experience of all of us doing EUS. This is a 33-year-old lady, which I had in my fellowship in London, actually, um, but we published it. Uh, she had re re recurrent acute pancreatitis, and she has had several CT scans and MRCP that were negative. Uh, she was referred for an EUS and we saw this pendiculated uh, lesion in the second part of the du duodenum. On EUS, you, you could see both the CBD, two tubular structures really, uh, which we thought and confirmed on uh, uh, ERCP, were the CBD and the pancreatic duct in the stalk. So this is the stalk here. Um, she went on to have surgery, we did FNA, I don't have, I'm not presenting the uh, data here because that's not the point. Uh, she had surgery and this was a paraganglioma of the papilla. Uh, the mechanism of pancreatitis here was uh, that the uh, lesion was constricting the uh, uh, pancreatic duct yeah, intermittently. Okay, let's move on to Ottoman pancreatitis. Um, uh, I'm, I'm sure all of you are aware there are two types of pancreatitis with the distinct uh, uh, demographic and clinical features. I'm not going to go into this. I just want to point out that they have uh, different histopathologic features. 
What are the pathognomonic findings of, um, of uh, autoimmune pancreatitis in the US? Well, none. Uh, they may, it may present as a diffuse pancreatic en enlargement. Uh, it's usually hypoechoic and uh, somewhat heterogeneous. Um, uh, and they, um, there may be peripancreatic hypoechoic uh, margins and an irregular main pancreatic tract. Or it may present as a, uh, as a focal lesion, hypoechoic, usually in the head with upstream dilation of the main pan pancreatic tract. In these patients, one obviously needs to exclude that there may be a malignancy. Uh, and that's probably the most important role of, uh, of EUS. Um, finally, uh, autoimmune pancreatitis on EUS may present with features compatible with chronic pa pancreatitis, lobularity, hyperechoic foxi, uh, and, and stranding. Um, I'm not going to discuss uh, too much about contrast enhanced EUS. I think Adrian covered this very nicely, but um, uh, uh, autoimmune pancreatitis is usually hypervascularized uh, as opposed to the hypovascularization of uh, pancreatic cancer. And this has been confirmed in a case series that was recently uh, pu published. However, it's, we're not still in the position to say that this may be used for the diagnosis of um, um, AIP. Now, I'm not going to to go through the, uh, uh, the diagnostic algorithms here. What I want to show you is that pancreatic core biopsy is part of the, of the algorithms, but it's not always required to put the, uh, di the diagnosis. And why is that? Because traditionally, it has been very difficult to obtain t tissue. Uh, there, there are two studies, two, two prospective studies looking at standard 22 gauge needles to obtain tissue for the, for the purpose of di diagnosing uh, autoimmune pan pancreatitis, both from, uh, uh, from the Far East. Um, uh, the results of the first one were disappointing with a sensitivity of only 8%. Per per percent. In the second study, uh, more patients were in, uh, enrolled, 78, and in most of them, uh, the uh, investigators were able to obtain at least uh, uh, to op obtain specimens with at least one high power field. They found that in more than half of these patients, they were able to uh, put a diagnosis of autoimmune pancreatitis, both in the group that had a definite diagnosis prior to, to US, but also in the group of patients who did not have a certain diagnosis of autoimmune pancreatitis. Pancreatitis. So this is promising, but the devil is, is, is in the de details. When you look at the, um, and it's actually de discussed and commented on, this is, uh, this is uh, what the uh, a histology specimen looked like. Uh, looked like. And the, uh, the authors explained that the uh, um, uh, took the uh, sample and then they used an 18 gauge of needle to extract every small fragment of tissue and send it off to the pathologist. So I'm not sure this study can actually be reproduced in real life. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure. I, it would be nice to hear the comments of uh, uh, our histopathologists. Uh, but anyway, this is a promising thing. Now, the, these studies were done on standard 22 gauge needles. How about the uh, uh, newer uh, a, a core needles? And we've heard a lot about them. Uh, I haven't been able to f find a study, but our experience, as well as the published ex experience from Denmark and elsewhere, uh, in terms of case series, is that uh, some of these needles may actually provide very good a, a specimens allowing uh, the precise di di diagnosis of, of uh, uh, autoimmune pancreatitis. We've had a, a couple of uh, cases in the last uh, three to six months uh, which were successful as uh, well, but more studies are needed. And finally, um, moving on to uh, chronic pancreatitis. Um, and there, uh, according to the recent European guideline, it should be 
diagnosed with uh, high uh, quality imaging modalities, uh, allowing the uh, identification of uh, uh, increased density of the parenchyma, uh, atrophy of the gland, calcification, pseudocysts, and ir irregularities of the main pa pancreatic duct inside branches. Now, it may be simple if you have a CT scan looking like that, that is to say there are calcifications in the uh, pancreas, but as I'm sure most of you are, all of you are aware, uh, re reality is usually more complicated. Several studies have looked at the uh, uh, performance characteristics of uh, uh, different imaging mo modalities, EUL, CRCP, MRCP, CT and transabdominal ultrasound to diagnose chronic pa pancreatitis. In this uh, recent meta-analysis, the pool's specificity, specificity was as expected high, uh, and the pool's uh, sensitivity was better for US and uh, uh, ERCP, worse for transdermal ultrasound. How, however, when the authors compared pair-wise, pair, pair, uh, only uh, ERCP was found to have a higher uh, sensitivity than transdermal ultrasound. When uh, we look at the uh, uh, we look at the area uh, under the uh, uh, um, receiver operating characteristics curve, EUS and uh, ERCP appear to have similarly uh, high areas, uh, and CT has also high but somewhat uh, lower. So the guidelines conclude that these modalities, ex excluding probably ultrasound, have comparable diagnostic accuracy. EUS appears to, together with uh, ERCP, e appear to uh, uh, um, uh, uh, be better. Uh, but, and the choice should be based on local availability, invasiveness, costs, and experience. So, what can chronic pancreatitis look like on uh, EUS? Um, and there, there are both ductal and parenchymal criteria. <laughs> Criteria. Obviously, you may have a dilated duct, you may have hyperechoic foci, um, you may have a, a, a hyperechoic uh, a wall of the pancreatic duct and lobulation. Um, you may have stones, obviously, but th this is not always the case. And you may have a honeycomb where uh, three or more lobules may uh, be next to uh, one another. Now, uh, tra traditionally, uh, we have relied on a, a fixed number of criteria to diagnose chronic pa pancreatitis, but in 2009, there was an attempt to, uh, to standardize things, both in terms of definition of the uh, different cri criteria, but also in terms of weighing the different cri cri criteria. That's how the uh, uh, Rosemont classification came up and the initial hopes were that inter-observer agreement would improve. And I think it did improve a, a little bit, although not a, a drastically. Um, in inter-observer agreement in different studies, uh, even with the uh, Rosemont criteria, is fair to moderate. But it's probably the best we uh, have. The good thing is that EUS seems to, and that's why I think there's promise here, is that EUS seems to correlate with pancreatic function and exocrine pancreatic function as shown in this study where a, a risk a score, depending on the number of EUS findings, um, uh, uh, indicative of chronic pancreatitis is related to the prevalence of pancreatic exocrine insufficiency. And in fact, in, in another observation study, the higher the uh, number of US findings compatible with pancreatitis, the higher the risk uh, for the patient to end up needing surgery for their chronic pancreatitis. Now, I'm not going to talk a lot about el elastography. I think uh, it has been discussed, but I'll show this study in which the uh, strain ratio, uh, which is a measure of uh, the um, uh, hardness of the, um, uh, of the uh, uh, pancreas, is related to the number of EUS criteria and appears to have good operating characteristics. For reasons that I think have to do with the uh, subjectivity of the uh, test and as well as uh, availability, I think uh, this uh, has not 
come into the uh, um, diagnostic algorithms, uh, but it does correlate with the probability of pancreatic uh, exocrine insufficiency. The higher the uh, strain ratio, the higher the uh, risk for uh, pancreatic insufficiency. So to conclude, regarding acute pancreatitis, I, um, uh, it seems that EUS may identify a specific cause in up to half the uh, cases, most commonly CBD stones and microlithiasis. EUS appear, appears to have a higher diagnostic yield uh, compared to MRCP, but the two tests are to be considered complementary. And I think EUS should be uh, performed early after a, a single first attack of unexplained acute pancreatitis. Regarding autoimmune pancreatitis, yes, and it may present in different uh, ways on uh, EUS, but there are no pathognomonic imaging findings, and that's why we need a tissue diagnosis. Um, standard 22 gauge needles um, may uh, uh, help, uh, but uh, uh, somebody needs to prove that uh, this is applicable in uh, uh, real life. Uh, and I think that FMB needles are probably the way further research-wise. Uh, uh, Finally, regarding chronic pancreatitis, EUS outperforms other imaging modalities in the initial diagnosis, and its findings correlate with pancreatic function and natural hi history. Um, el elastography also correlates with EUS findings of chronic pancreatitis and exocrine pancreatic function.